Well, it's a delight to be able to be with this group here, even if it is by video. I apologize that I cannot be uh, there in person, but as I approach my 90th birthday, I'm told that I do not have the same strength that I had at a young 88 when I was at Oxford last year. Therefore, I'm uh, only able to appear with you and welcome you to this conference uh, by video. Thank you for your patience. I want to particularly commend uh, Nigel Bigger and John Whitty Jr. for their leadership and vision to put this conference together so that you'll be dealing with the issue of is religious freedom threatened? Perspectives that are transatlantic. It is a, uh, it's a, a delight to recognize that uh, this conference is jointly sponsored by two of our, of our organizations with whom we have worked enormously closely as a foundation. Uh, they are, of course, headed by Nigel Bigger, the McDonald Center on Theology, Ethics, and Public Life at Christ Church, Oxford, and then at Emory, the uh, Center for the Study of, of Law and Religion, headed by um, John Whitty, Jr. I also want to thank those who've helped them with the conference including Jenny Dunn and also uh, Amy Wheeler, uh, the key associate to John Whitting. I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about one or two other topics before we deal with the conference itself, because these may be topics that you should know about, but may not be priorities for other agenda items today. For example, this is a memorable occasion for both of our hosting uh, fo hosting entities. For the McDonald Center, this event represents its 10th anniversary. It was only about a dozen years ago that Nigel Bigger, moving over from Dublin to assume the chair as the Regius Professor of Theology and Public Life at, at Oxford, began to dream of a way to increase his opportunity for writing and speaking and to begin to enhance his public reputation. Fortunately, we began working together a little over 10 years ago and, and, have, and have been very actively working together since that time. We're delighted that, um, that Nigel Bigger has done such a great job in leading this activity and that all of our initial uh, aims have been at least fulfilled and more so in general. We are delighted that the center is now well established and that not only with his initial leadership, but over a period of time, it is now fully endowed for perpetuity. So we can anticipate uh, many years ahead, hopefully, in which there will be Christian thought encouraging uh, activities from the McDonald Center. I'd also like to commend uh, 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 Dr. James Orr, who has helped enormously in putting together this conference. We commend uh, uh, all who have been associated and, and have been helpful to the McDonald Center over the years, and we believe that it will be a lasting legacy of both Nigel Bigger as its founding director and also for our family foundation. I also want to commend uh, for its celebration as a part of this event, uh, John Whitty and the, uh, and the Center for the Study of Law and Religion. They are now completing with this event a five-year program of distinguished McDonald scholars who have lectured each year at Emory Law School. In doing so, they have typically filled up their auditorium of something 300 to 350 people at almost each of these major lectures of which quite a number of you have been, uh, have been participants, and we're grateful very much for this. One of their more important ones was this last year in which he had about a half dozen of our McDonald scholars who appeared to discuss the Reformation. For some of us who are just lay leaders and do not have the scholarly background uh, that many of you have, uh, we considered the Reformation to be largely a spiritual event that ended up with a division of the Catholic Church into not only the Catholic Church, but in a multiplicity 
of Protestant denominations. Obviously, this was a momentous event, but it was only one of many that occurred, as we learned by last year's lecture series at Emory. And that is that the era in which um, the, um, the church had prescribed the rules and relationships of society had been determined by canon law that soon dropped by the wayside as individual states and, and, and governmental entities at various levels began to establish laws that changed almost every aspect of society. The Reformation was not just a religious event, but it was a total a revolution in society in terms of how we think about things, in terms of how we are legally judged, and how we begin to plan and handle our relationships. So I commend uh, John Whitty and I commend his center for their fine lecture series, and uh, also for jointly hosting this with uh, Nigel Bigger and the McDonald Center here at Oxford. It might also be appropriate to mention a few words about the McDonald Agape Foundation. We are the sponsors of this event, and we are many others. It was in 1989 that uh, my wife Susie and I decided to set up the McDonald Agape Foundation. Uh, we did it modestly and had uh, very limited ambitions at the beginning, but the Lord had views that were far in excess of ours. And again, we were amazed that uh, the situation continued to evolve, that from our initial interest in enhancing the work of Jesus Christ, that we began to identify a void in encouraging distinguished scholars for Christ in distinguished universities. We initially identified seven in which my lifetime goal was to have small programs and perhaps three of these. These seven universities were Harvard, Yale, Duke, Emory, Chicago in the US, and Oxford and Cambridge in the United Kingdom. Amazingly enough, now over almost three decades later, we have had programs in each of these seven including endowed either chairs or centers in three of them. In addition, we have programs that are underway in some six or seven different uh, universities and institutions, both in the United Kingdom and in the United States. In looking ahead, we are now uh, beginning to hear propositions from and enticements to enter in a number of new geographical areas. Therefore, we will uh, begin our first assignment on the continent this fall at the University of Heidelberg, and we're now in final discussions for the sponsorship over several years of three to four visiting Christian scholars to lecture to students, faculty, and meetings with church leaders at the University of Hong Kong. This is an exciting opening in which it's only a small seed but we never know what might very well the Lord use in developing from it. Our foundation as a result has now uh, been fortunate enough to sponsor more than 25 different distinguished scholars and in various institutions. And even more importantly, since we uh, underwrite a variety of conferences, colloquia, and lectures each year with, uh, with a number of institutions, we have had more than 700 Christian scholars who participated in one or more of our events, and we're enormously grateful to this group, and we're amazed at how the Lord has used it. As, um, as you can see, I, um, I am now uh, in a situation where my travel is very limited, and I'm more of a kibitzer uh, than the uh, animator of our work. As a result, I. Uh, I hope that many of you will have an opportunity to meet Peter McDonald, who uh, some two years ago uh, felt called to turn away from a promising career in cyber security and in big data to in fact assume full-time Christian work as the president and uh, chief operating officer for our foundation. Uh, Peter will be is attending your conference and he, along with Jonathan Aitken, who is one of our directors who resides in London, uh, are there, and I hope 
you will be able to share and meet ideas uh, with them during the course of this conference. In addition, as we look ahead, you will have the opportunity to hear from about a dozen uh, different scholars, McDonald scholars largely, about half from the United States and half from Europe with mostly uh, uh, representatives from the United Kingdom. Uh, they will be sharing with you a series of views on what are the current threats to religious freedom and to the freedom of conscience. Our two uh, basic English-speaking nations uh, across the Atlantic have shared a great history about religious freedom. In England, it dates back to the Magna Carta in the 1200s, and then later with the English uh, civil rights events of some four centuries later. In the United States, it began to be recognized as an item with some of the colonial uh, provincial constitutions. But then it became embedded in our life through the uh, first amendment of the, the first element in the First Amendment of our Bill of Rights to the Constitution. This has been a subject of enormous interest to me now for since the 1980s. I had the great privilege at that time of being chairman of the Williamsburg Charter Foundation and worked closely with our executive director, Dr. Oz Guinness, who also, uh, who, who is a Brit and also a graduate of Oxford. He was a distinguished scholar who, was, who contributed enormously because of his keen observation of America and our many possibilities, but also multiple shortcomings. Uh, to a degree, he is almost a commentator today as if a, uh, a version of a modern de Tocqueville. Interestingly enough, although this project lasted for some three years, it was an integral part of the celebration of our 200th anniversary of our U.S. Constitution. As a result, among our 60 some odd board members, about a third were members either of the House of Representatives or of the U.S. Senate. We were also uh, fortunate to combine for a full weekend at Williamsburg at the end, near the end of our work, in which uh, it was heavily attended with representatives of each of the major religions in the United States, uh, along with the uh, uh, keynote address there uh, by the late Dr. Billy Graham. As for this conference, uh, I, my hope is that it provides a better way for uh, thinking anew about the centrality of religious uh, freedom in the church and in the world. Uh, we are under great threat. In my view, one of the greatest threats we face is simply individual complacency. We are spoiled because we have assumed during the course of our lifetime that we would always be eligible for and would be able to practice religious freedom and individually our freedom of conscience. But this is constantly under threat. And now we begin to see legal challenges which some of our speakers will outline in greater detail that are challenging by particularly non-believers who are concerned that other rights, including the sexual rights and, 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 and other secondary ones listed in our U.S. Bill of Rights will actually precede that of religion. Our hope is that each generation will therefore renew its commitment to uh, religious freedom and that our governmental officials and representatives will continue to hold this as really, as it truly is, a gift from God. Thank you again for your kind attention. I appreciate enormously uh, being with you, even by video. I commend again our hosts, uh, Professors Nigel Bigger and John Whitty Jr. for the superb work that they're doing. And I send to each of you God's blessing, and I hope that he will bless not only you as individuals, but also the work of this conference. Thank you, and good night.